Hello everyone, this is Snola. I'm gonna make a couple of videos about RAID and how the how the RAID technology works. Uh, many people probably wonder what uh, RAID is and if you google it you'll find all sorts of technical mumbo jumbo about it and it might not all be as understandable for the common consumer. And I'll try to make a couple of videos here that hopefully can make it a little bit more understandable. First of all, what is RAID? RAID is a collection of multiple hard drives and they're arranged into arrays to achieve redundancy. Redundancy means that you have all your data stored on uh, the drives and if a drive fails, you won't lose any data. That's the key word about redundancy. What does uh, RAID mean? Uh, in the beginning, I think the, the acronym came up in 1987. It meant a redundant array of inexpensive disks. And the first RAID, I think, was mirroring, and it meant you could put um, cheap drives, maybe not that reliable, uh, into an array, and if one of the drives failed, you didn't lose any data. Uh, after a while, the acronym was uh, rewritten, and it now stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks meaning that there's a lot of uh, independent disks working together making a storage array. Uh, why do we need RAID? Well, it's a cost-effective storage if you need redundancy and it uh, gives you increased performance in terms of read and write speed. Not all types are um, high and uh, high performance but um, some of them do deliver higher uh, reading speeds or writing speeds or both and the last and most important redundancy uh, for a consumer today uh, the most common types of RAID that are available is uh, RAID 0 also known as striped disks and you have uh, RAID 1 also known as uh, mirroring or mirrored disks and you have RAID 5 uh, also known as striped disks with distributed parity that's a long name I know but that's uh, that's what it's called and some people might want to ask about JBOD. Why isn't JBOD in the list of common types of RAID? That's simply because JBOD is a non-RAID architecture. Um, what do I need to make a RAID array? Well, first of all, you're going to need a minimum of, a, of two hard drives, or else it's going to be a single drive. Uh, <laughs> kind of obvious, but um, that's one of the requirements. And the other requirement is that you have to have a RAID controller. It could either be a hardware-based controller built into your motherboard or as a separate um, controller card, PCI, PCI Express, uh, or whatever. And it can be software-based, meaning that uh, perhaps your operating, operating system supports some types of RAID. Uh, modes or architectures. Uh, Windows XP and OS X uh, offers both uh, striping and mirroring. Uh, I think also OS X offers uh, JBOD, but it's not RAID, as uh, I mentioned. And also there is a way to make uh, Windows XP or later Windows versions uh, offer you RAID 5. Uh, I'm not, not sure if it's standard now, but uh, many years ago I read how you could change some uh, files in Windows XP and uh, make it to support RAID 5. And what type of RAID mode 
or RAID architecture is right for me. That's depending on two, two things, or actually three things. Uh, the first, it depends uh, of your need for redundancy. How much redundancy do you need? And how much uh, money you can afford? And the last thing is uh, your performance needs. So it's going to be a, a fine balance between do you need redundancy, do you need high performance, and how much money can you put into it. And I'm going to make a couple of uh, videos now uh, and post them here on YouTube and try to explain what the benefits and the downsides are of the, the different raid modes. Uh, if you're interested, take a look at them. Uh, by the way, I uh, forgot to say one thing. Uh, no matter what kind of RAID array or RAID setup you're using, it does never, ever replace the need for backing up your files. So no matter what, always keep a backup of your files.